You're listening to the Hometown Crowd Podcast, part of the 910 Comedy Podcast Network. On this week's episode of Hometown Crowd, we recap an exciting Super Bowl 54 as the NFL crowns their new champions. We also break down a huge trade in Major League Baseball and take a look at the Fayetteville Marksman's continued push for the top spot in the SPHL. Get on your feet, you're cheering with the Hometown Crowd. Hello and welcome to episode 22 of Hometown Crowd, your source for sports news across the country and in our backyard of Fayetteville, North Carolina. I'm one of your hosts, Tim Dipple. Hey everybody, it's Mac. And I'm Heather, the girl who farted in seventh grade math class, but you never let her live it down, like even if it's 40 years later. <laughs> Hi, Smith. <laughs> mm, I never cool. know what you're going to come up with. That's part of it. That's part of the fun. Uh, Well, be sure to follow us on all social media at Hometown Crowd on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also email us at hometowncrowdpod at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to us uh, wherever you find your podcasts. If you're an Apple subscriber, we would love a five-star review. And this week, we do have a new one. Woohoo! This review comes from Kelbell2009, who writes, Go sports, five stars. If you want to impress your co-workers or significant others with sports stuff uh this podcast is your new best friend i don't sport much that seems to be a running theme among the people that that listen to our show Uh, this is exactly what we want for a sports podcast yeah i don't i don't sport much but i've learned so much since listening to hometown crowd funny engaging and veteran run what more could you ask for well, thanks uh, for that, Kelvin. First of all, I I don't run, so there's that. And um, well, I guess you two are the vets, so whatever. <laughs> but right. I mean, it really does seem to be a, a running theme that we're like the sports podcast for people who don't sport. Uh, yeah, and that's probably good because eventually they'll find a better one that like talks about like coverage breakdowns and. You know, salary cap numbers, a little more in depth. But you know, we, you know what, we will be your sports like podcast starter. That's what mm-hmm. we will. Do. Yep. Well, yeah, we'll be, we'll the, uh, we'll be the uh, starter pack. Yeah, we're essentially sports podcast fluffers at this point. <laughs> or you know, we're we're the podcast that still has you know the windows that you have to actually roll down. You can't yeah. press the button. Yeah, that that's what we are. Where we still is- have a tape deck in there. We're the 84 Chevette of sports podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, but you know what, though? They don't build cars like they used to back then, so. No, like you said, Heather, that was the most impressive tape deck because it was almost twice the size of the actual Chevette. Exactly. Um, and then when your buddies got in the back seat, holy shit, they almost tipped that bad boy over. But at mm-hmm. least you had four wheels in a semi-running vehicle that may or may not fall into a pothole and get lost. See, all I can think about is on our sister podcast, That's Just My Face, on one of the early episodes, DB talks about himself, how he's like uh, your starter black guy. And we're like, <laughs> we're like the DB of sports podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we're your starter sports podcast. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that's all right. I, I can handle that. Um. But the big news this week, well, first off, how are you guys doing? Um, I had a midterm for an eight-week course and then immediately after a, a quiz. And I don't feel good about either of them. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, other than that, I mean, yeah, I'm not going to complain. You're here. Yeah. Recording. Heather, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Just working. Um Number one fan and I bought a house, so there's that. I saw that. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So You two are just adulting like hell already this year. I know, and it is exhausting. Yeah. It is exhausting. Really. Well, I mean, you had a whole year last month to do it, because January just kind of went forever. Yeah, I know. That's pretty much how it happened. I mean, is it just me, or did January just suck? Oh, my God. Dude, I... One of my favorite memes that I saw a couple of weeks ago said, uh, is 2020 going to have other months in it or is it just January? <laughs> I mean, I saw a tweet that said, hey, y'all, 
it's January 38th. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just like, yeah, that sounds about right. That, that's how it I saw one, my personal favorite was like, it was a take on the, you know, 30 days half September. It was like 30 days are in uh, September, April, June, and November. Uh, unless a leap year, February has 29. All the rest have three days more, except for January, which has 6,324. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it just, it seemed like a really long month. And it's it probably did. because we're dealing with like the, the hang, you know, the, the holiday hangover and just like dealing with family or, or kids or whatever the hell else. Yeah. But see, now we're, we are being ushered into the era of the football hangover. No, no, we have games we have, on Saturday. Woo! <laughs> Listen, we have 30 weeks until the NFL kicks back on. We, we get our hair of the dog football this week. Oh, yeah. that's true. Fair enough. Fair right. enough. We have our, our poor man's football. And Heather, I just want you to know, um, yes. I looked at Dennis Dodd's XFL breakdown, like how he ranked teams based on mm-hmm. coaching, mm-hmm. Uh, our coaching staff and players. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Roughnecks are seventh and the Dragons are eighth. So, where did the uh, Vipers fall on that one? I think fourth. Um, okay. But he, he said he wanted to drop them lower for their hideous uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Yeah. Uh, in the top two, it was DC and Dallas. Mm. So. Two of the other teams I was debating on, but decided to go with Tampa. Uh. Uh, you know what? Let's just roll with it. I'm I'm gonna get a hat eventually, but. 36 bucks for a hat i mean maybe when my school refund gets in i'll grab one but until then i'll just i, I kind of at least want to wait to see if they finish a season no man no you gotta you gotta start at the bottom level that's right uh, entry entry level fans. like yeah right. like like yeah you especially in this case like we are starting like in the dark back corner of the basement and we're slowly making our way up to the stairs so yep if we can get to the first step, uh, that would be the XFL championship game. Mm-hmm. And I feel if they can get that far. Let's just they... get to the, the, the first playoff round. Yeah, let's just. <laughs> <laughs> and, okay, oh, if, so so we're clearly assuming that it's even going to make it that far. Well, I they mean, have, they have money at that point, it. it makes it further than the AAF did. Yeah, I mean, Fair the, enough. The, the Alliance of American Football had zero money behind it. Um, because the one guy, the biggest investor, literally like the month of the kickoff to the initial game, went to jail for like securities fraud and did not have the money. He like it wasn't that he didn't give it to Charlie Ebersol to fund the AAF. It just didn't exist. Um, so like when that's your biggest backer financially, you're kind of fucked. Nice. And then he then he sold out to Tom Dundon. <clears throat> If you want to, if you want to hear our breakdown of the XFL, check out episode twenty-one. We went pretty in depth on that last week. Uh, but let's go <laughs> into the uh, biggest news of the week. Um, we have a new Bowl. Super Bowl champion. Yes, I mean uh, Kansas City, man. You got to tip your hat to them. They played a good game and stayed really focused. Yeah, they did. Um, I'm sure your your pops is pretty happy about it, Heather. Oh my God, yeah, pops is just beside himself and and then of course obviously you know a bunch of my friends from back when i was in kansas beside themselves like that was such a good game to watch it, it really was, was very entertaining not having any dog in the fight not particularly loving or hating anybody on the field like it was a I good mean, same. game yeah same yeah i was um i feel vindicated in in, in my saying that i i trust in uh, Mahomes to deal with adversity better than Garoppolo. Yeah. Uh, but on the flip side of that, I think Shanahan uh, has maybe a second half issue in big games because this is the second time as a play caller in the Super Bowl where he completely took his foot off the gas. I'm really questioning his time management in that game, um, especially right there at the end of the first half. Um Kansas City, they get through the two minute, uh, two minute warning. Two minute warning. That's the word I was looking for. Yep. Uh, two minute warning, and then have to punt the ball. And Shanahan doesn't call a timeout. He's got all three on his side, and lets the clock like takes over with like fifty four seconds left, and runs two like. 
bullshit run plays and doesn't call a timeout. And the only reason they even pass the ball is because Kansas City forced them to by calling a timeout of their own. Yeah, I mean, I think that was more just trying to get to the hat, you know, get to the locker room, make the adjustments you needed to make. Uh, because, I mean, in the first half, they played lights out on uh, defense. And then San Francisco was doing the right things on offense. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I mean, Garoppolo showed up for the first half. Like he was playing like he was a quarterback. Yeah, I would say probably for the first two and a half quarters. Uh, um, but once you saw Kansas City kind of claw back, I think you, you that's where you saw uh, a team. I mean, that rightfully so rode Mostert into the Super Bowl. Um uh, you know, because he just was punishing people the last two weeks in the playoffs. And then when he had needed him to get tough yards and it made sense for you, for him to get you tough yards, he was not getting the ball. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I just, I mean, you, you can't really argue with a Super Bowl quarterback or a Super Bowl coach. He's there where I'm was sitting on my ass watching it on TV, mm-hmm. you know, but, but if we can't argue with a Super Bowl coach, what are we doing on this show? <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite, one of my favorite memes that came out of the game was uh, it was a picture of Andy Reid and he was looking at his card, his coach card, and then like it cut it, you know, it shows what what he's really looking at it, and it's the Waffle House menu. Yes, <laughs> yes, because it actually does kind of look like a Waffle House menu. Um, um, but yeah, I think Andy Reid and, and Eric Bieniemy both work made good adjustments at halftime. Um, to ensure that, because I mean, Kansas City struggled offensively in the first half. I, and I think they struggled in a way that we haven't really seen in the last few years. Um, but in that second half, man, they came out ready to play football. Yeah, and, they had to come to Jesus meeting in that locker room at halftime. Yeah. Well, and I, and I think a lot of it just had to do with making smart adjustments, like mm-hmm. what they were doing against that San Francisco based defense wasn't working. Well, and if they weren't doing the adjustments they made, were very small. Like they weren't these big, huge ones. They were very almost minute little changes where they were turning knobs and just they found it where it clicked. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. You didn't need big adjustments there. Mm -hmm. Uh, You just needed to, you know, make the decisions to, you know, run guys in motion to get guys like Tyreek Hill, those good matchups to where you know that they're going to burn by their man and be open. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I just I think they did a great job. I mean, honestly, both teams did. But I just think Shanahan, like, the thing is, when you know you're up, just keep pounding that gas and just blow right over who's ever in front of you. Because, I mean, that, he backed off again. Like, he started, he got really conservative, you know, conservative in his play calling until he was down and realized, oh, fuck, I got to throw the ball. You know, mm-hmm. and it just, you know, and those, those picks by Garoppolo did not help whatsoever. No. Um, Kansas City's defense looked really aggressive. Uh, and they and they made smart plays all night. So I I mean, that's that's gonna be a hell of a team. Uh, that, that's gonna be like a if if my Pats have to finally bow out and, and go slink back into mediocrity and suckage, uh, Kansas City is gonna be the team to kind of fill that gap. Which I thought. Speaking of the Patriots, I thought that Tom Brady was going to pull the biggest baller move. When oh, that man. Hulu commercial came on, oh, like God. I was ready for that to be his announcement that he was retiring That's and exactly... like make the Super Bowl conversation all about him. Like I was, I thought that was going to be the biggest baller move. That Do you was realize exactly what James and I said when we saw that commercial? It was a baller move because it had everybody, a bajillion million people, wondering what the fuck was going to happen when they when he put that picture up on Twitter. Mm-hmm. And everybody's sitting there speculating, and no yeah. one had any idea it was a fucking Hulu commercial. So one Hulu, whoever their uh, public re- relations and marketing people are, holy They're genius! Fuck, you are amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, and can I be your intern? <laughs> um, but I mean, it was it was a brilliant piece of fucking marketing, and then just at the very end, where you know, or you know, it's, I'm not going anywhere yet. So I mean, that was. I, I really like we talked about this. I don't think Brady's going anywhere. I don't think he's calling it yet. And I don't think he's leaving New England. I think he's setting himself for life after football. I don't think he's going to sign more than a two-year contract. But I don't see him leaving the Pats. I just don't think there's going to be a team that realize, that's going to pay $30, $35 million for a 42-year-old quarterback 
where he's going to have to go and learn a completely new system. Well, and it's kind of the same thing with Drew Brees at the Saints. I, I don't. I think he said that he wants to retire a Saint. Yeah, so. I, mean, I don't. I don't see Brady leaving. I don't see Brees leaving. I think Philip Rivers is like he's gone. Um, mm -hmm. You know, San Diego is going to have to find a quarterback. Um, and it, and it yeah. looks. I mean, all all the uh, mock drafts have uh, Herbert falling in their lap, and that's not a bad choice for them. Where's San Diego at? Six. They're picking at six. I can see Herbert going to six, and I, I don't know it's, about it's that. right behind Miami, uh, who's likely to take Tua. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I mean, I just don't see. I mean, I don't know how I feel about Herbert yet. I, I think he played a Pac-12 schedule, and I just, I'm, I'm really unsure of how he would translate to the NFL. Yeah. You know, could he be, you know, uh, another one of those young up-and-coming quarterbacks that are kind of you know, stepping up as the old guard moves out. Sure. But he could also be Kyle Allen who, you know, had two good games and then just looked eh, the rest of the season, you know? So, yeah, if I remember right, he's pretty much like, he's your prototypical quarterback though. He's six, six. Uh, so he's, he's a large dude. Um, I didn't realize Justin Herbert was that big. Damn. Right. Um, you yeah, know, I mean, this isn't, He's a pocket guy, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, he might fit pretty well into that San Diego system. I don't know, because he played out of the shotgun exclusively in Oregon, you know? So, yeah. not every team does that in the NFL. He, you're going to flex back and forth between under center and shotgun, and, you know, uh, we'll see, though. I'm looking forward to the draft. Yeah. I did notice a theme in the Super Bowl this year. There seemed to be a lot of women power, female power, however you want to phrase it, uh, between the national anthem, America the Beautiful, the commercial that started right at the beginning of the Super Bowl with the kicker, and it turned out they were female players, and everybody mm -hmm. was like, huh? Oh, yeah, we could cheer for this. And then you got the, the halftime show that everybody's talking about, for better or worse. <laughs> okay, there was so nothing wrong with that halftime show. Oh, I, I agree. I, I didn't watch the halftime show. I, I never do. Um, but, like, what was everybody bitching about? Because I saw that. Um, it was mostly your older conservative people who were complaining, A, about how much skin and crotch grab grabbing was going on, and B, that some of the, some of the songs sung by Jennifer Lopez and Shakira, Shakira were in Shakira. Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Boomer Facebook uncle needs to just, like, go go back to QAnon and fuck around over there and, and well, leave those two women alone. It wasn't I mean, just them. It wasn't just them. It was people that I knew, you know, growing up in Louisiana. So it wasn't just, like, super old people. It's just pearl clutchers. That's what yep. it was. Pearl clutchers. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, the fact they're both Spanish speakers and they well, both play a very, they both perform very Latin infused music, especially Shakira. God damn it. You know? Well, and here's the whole thing. These are the same people that were posting thirsty ass reactions to, Adam you know, Levine. Adam Levine being shirtless last year, but God forbid that somebody have on a skin colored, you know, like bodysuit that had everything covered, but yeah. God forbid, you know, or, you know, or that a 50 year old woman gets up on a pole, you uh, know, that's oh God, my children, my, the kids, the children. That's not just any 50 year old woman that is, God, Jennifer she's, cut, Lopez. she's cut from clay, man. She's amazing. Dude, no, here's the thing. No. No, Mac, you need to watch it because seriously, and I said it to James when, when Shakira first came out, I was like, she looks exactly like she did in 2000. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, she's, she's literally uh, has not aged a single day in the last 20 years. Um, I'll check it out just because I'm fond of both women. Um, I, I think my favorite comment was some... I'd probably wager 40s, 50s year old women, woman saying, um, I wish they wouldn't twerk like that. That doesn't take any talent. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All 
right. Um, okay, you know, I just it's it's this it's a halftime show. Mm-hmm. All mm-hmm. right, you know that. I mean, if I'm, I remember correctly, people bitched about Beyonce what five years ago. Yeah. Or whatever. People well, will bitch about whatever. Yeah, people will bitch about anything. But like you said, Heather, they're they're close. Uh, and I think the NFL ensures that happens after the Janet Jackson, Justin Timberlake fiasco. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, that's well, why the checklist when they're sitting down with him. Okay. Yeah. And do you, and, have, do you have a brassiere? And I can see Goodell saying it just like that, too, because he's a nerd. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> uh, excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a brassiere that comes in segments? We have to ensure it's all one piece. Well, or just, and, there's a lot of body tape, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, and something, too, I think that really kind of bothered me about it not just from just you know this this need for women to tear other women down because for whatever their insecurity is but the thing is you know these two women are both mothers yeah you know and so and i and they made it they you know like Cause you know, I too am a mom and it's just kind of like, you know, yeah, you can have kids and still be sexy and, you know, hustle and, and, you know, put on a show like that at 40, 50 years old yeah. and not just be, you know, stuck at home or whatever. Like, okay, calm least... down, Brenda, you know, just because yeah. you don't look like that and you don't move like that doesn't mean we that can... that person's a terrible mother or anything like that. We can look at it one of this one of two ways. We can have our 50-year-old performers look like Jennifer Lopez and Shakira, or we get Mick Jagger and Keith Richards. Which one would you rather fucking look God. at? God. Okay. Give. I'll, I'll take. I'll take the former and not the latter. You know that. That's just my personal opinion. I had zero problem with this halftime performance, but I'm still holding out for the day when Weird Al gets invited to do the halftime show. You might want to just start the GoFundMe now, Tim. All right. Uh. I, I, w- I want to do a Weird Al show where the original artists come out and sing the parodies with him at halftime. Uh, I think that would be awesome. Well, well the we'll MJs get... is going to be real awkward. Yeah. Well, yeah, you don't you do not do the bad or uh, yeah, uh, beat it parodies. That one. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, Tim, we'll get your resume forwarded to Goodell. We'll see what he says. You know? Right, right. Make uh, a pitch. Make sure you have your, eleva- your elevator pitch ready for that. Oh, yeah. Because... Yeah, you better be ready. But with the NFL season coming to a close, it kind of feels like we're wrapping up the first chapter of this podcast Uh, because we started with the NFL previews and then Heather's first episode was our college football preview. And now both of those seasons have come to an end. Yeah, I, I, I think my seasonal depression doesn't have anything to do with weather. It just revolves around the sports calendar. Um, because football's over, and I'm left with the Cavs, and that's... they play really good first halves. Oh yeah, and then just fall off. It's because there's no depth there. It's not a deep team. Yeah. Um, and then once baseball starts up, I'm like, yay! And then we get to about the All Star break, and then I'm like, huh. Oh. And it hasn't <laughs> been quite that bad the last few years, but I just don't. I'm kind of dreading the trade deadline this season because I think Francisco's gone. Mm. I, I I don't want him to leave. Yeah, I just and with the the amount of star players that are getting traded, uh, especially for what we flipped for Kluber, I'm just like, who the fuck made that decision? Like, yeah, it didn't seem like we got a whole hell of a lot for him. But what do I know? I, I'm just on a, I'm on the '84 Chevette podcast, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, we still have the XFL coming up to. Uh extend your football love for 10 uh, weeks so heather if we make it through the xfl season if we go the whole way fair enough all right we'll only have 20 weeks left until kickoff sweet <laughs> yeah. uh the nba and nhl are in full swing but i mean we haven't really been giving a whole lot of love to either of those sports this season i'm an nba fiend but the nhl i'm i'm not your boy no I that I, I respect That's my hockey one players out there. But yeah. Maybe he can belittle the Seattle team too. <laughs> Maybe we'll start man. just getting like designated correspondents for our show. So, you know, periodically James can come on and talk wrestling or NHL and 
No, nah, no, nah, fuck that. We're going to do like a daily show. We're just going to send him out and have him ask really inappropriate questions. Oh, my questions God. About sports. <laughs> do not. <laughs> do I mean, we are a 910 comedy podcast. He, he absolutely would. Do not. He, all right, guys, we're going live to number one fan, also known as James. James I swear to God, do not. James, James is out at the Ramsey Road Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Talking WrestleMania. <laughs> Heather what? is in the parking lot having a hyperventilation <laughs> episode. The good news for baseball fans. Next week, pitchers and catchers report for spring training. Yes. That starts on the 11th, which is Tuesday. Yes, uh, I'm pretty excited. Um, I just, I hope, I don't know. Like, it, it's the Indians fan in me. Every year is our year. But after 2016, it's just been like a series of, you know, it, it seems like missed opportunities. Yeah. And it's very frustrating. I mean, how did we win? What, what did we win? 93, 95 games last year and still missed the playoffs? Well, it's because uh, a lot of teams just played much better baseball. And if you look at the Indians, we didn't do shit the first two months. Yeah, you know, well, we that's under, how we play ball. You know, we were under 500, and then played really good baseball the rest of the season, and we didn't do like we had. You know, the tribe didn't do like they had been doing, which is going on like 10, 15, 20 run or 20 win game. You know, runs at yeah. the end of the summer, and with the Twins just beating the the shit out of a baseball, um, you know, it was hard to keep up with them. And that talk, geez, talk about a turnaround, man. They were hammered dog shit three years ago. And now they're they're going to be contending for the American League crown, you know, or at least making playoffs. Well, <laughs> well the big baseball news this week is uh, Boston traded uh, Mookie Betts and David Price to the LA, Los Angeles Dodgers in a three-team trade with the Minnesota Twins. Uh, yeah, yeah, I... I don't know, man. Like I, I, you're you're starting to see a lot of these. Um, I mean, Mookie Betts is one of those like MVP players, young too, and um, you're starting to see a move. Like there's talk that Chris Bryant is going to be traded by Chicago because he lost his grievance uh, over his service time. So rather than being a free agent next year, it'll he won't it'll be two years from now. So there there's talk that the Cubs are going to move like one of their cornerstone guys, and like, this is just, I mean, the fucking Dodgers, man, really? <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, the Dodgers, uh, who appeared to in the 2017 and 2018 World Series, sent Alex Verdugo to the Red Sox and Kenta Maeda to Minnesota, while Minnesota sends pitching prospect Brewstar Gratterol to Boston? Gratterol? Yeah. yeah, I mean... I don't know if you've noticed, but Boston's ownership group is really trying to get underneath that um, the luxury tax for whatever reason. Because, um, I mean, there's still talent there, but I just – I find it hard to believe that you would trade, honestly, your, your best baseball player. Uh, and, that, you know, Mookie Betts is something else, man. Um, he's a lot of fun. And you're, you're going to put him in a lineup that's got Cody Ballinger, Justin Turner, Max Muncy. And then Gavin Lux is coming up. So, like, the Dodgers, this is like a case of the rich just got a whole lot richer. Um, or as we like to call it, America. Um, yeah, Sportsline uh, gives them a 30% chance of winning the World Series right now. Yeah, but again, this is the Dodgers. They'll, it seems like they'll fuck it up in the playoffs somehow. <laughs> um, Wait, so have the Dodgers become the new Braves? Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, I mean, the Braves actually won world series. Yeah. And the Dodgers are still, still Damn, on a bit of a that's, dry streak. That's but, cold blooded. But I mean, I'm surprised uh, that they managed to get David Price's contract off the books. Like, it seems like Boston's GM was like, listen, man, if you want Mookie, you got to take price. Like, that's why <laughs> you can't have him. And the uh, Dodgers went, yeah, we'll take that Cy Young winner. Well, I mean, he hasn't he hasn't pitched anywhere close to that level in two or you know two three years. He's I don't want to say he's washed, but he's like a he's a back end of the rotation guy now. Um, and but I mean, look at the return though. Um, I mean, you, you're getting back, <laughs> uh, you know, a prospect for a guy who won an MVP award two years ago. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm not um, 
I'm, I'm scared to see what the Indians do with Francisco Lindor because if you're not gaining back like a, a major league ready player, like a guy who's producing already and some dra- you know, some prospects, like if Boston can't get that for Mookie, we're not going to get that for Francisco. No. You know? Well, breaking news this evening, Andre Iguodala was traded from the Memphis Grizzlies to the Miami Heat, who are expected to give him a two-year, I think I saw, $30 million extension. extension. Yeah. I mean, he's in the last year of a deal that's going to make where he's making $17 million. And I'll tell you what $17 million gets you. He averaged 5.7 points, 3.7 rebounds, and 3.2 assists. As the sixth man, all right? That is what you get for $17 million. And I just don't understand it. I, I'm not going to knock uh, Iggy as a player. You know, I saw we watched him four years in the finals and just give LeBron fits. Uh, yeah. But, I mean, 15 mil is a lot of money to, to give to a guy who doesn't even average six points again. So what and, you're saying is, like, I could make that kind of money? Oh, I mean, that's the thing. The NBA went through this, this raft of... Uh, they had a huge spike in the salary cap, and they over like you saw people getting overpaid like crazy. Um, and then they're like, "Yeah, the salary cap's going to go up by this much the next year," and it didn't. It went up by like five million dollars, and everybody's like, "Damn it, we <laughs> we overpaid all these people, and now we can't get rid of them." Um, but Iguodala is going to get that kind of money anyway because he did play on four straight uh, finals teams. Yep. You know, so I mean that that was going to happen, and and Miami has been surprising um all season because this was supposed to be another year where they're kind of clawing back up from the bottom but they've got a good young team and you know you bring Iguodala in for that veteran leadership and they're sitting know. fourth in the east right now yeah I mean it, that's a good ball club uh Tyler Harrow has been an outstanding pick for them um oh, wow. but I'm, I'm surprised that they moved Justice Winslow who was like uh he was a 2011 first rounder um but he's only played in like 11 games this year. So like he's been injured almost the entire season. I just, I, this might've just been a case of uh, Memphis just trying to get something back for him and get him the hell out of Memphis. Um, because at the beginning of the season, they wanted a first round pick for him. So. Well, do you know what um, $17 million gets you at Taco Bell? Uh, a whole franchise. No, it gets you four million two hundred sixty thousand six hundred fifty-two plates of nachos Bill Grande. Well, that's that's interesting. <laughs> I just listen. That's you ask what could seventeen million dollars get you there? Boom. A really expensive case of diarrhea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They want yeah. him. They want him out, right? So there you go. <laughs> but I mean, it, this will be good. This, you know, Memphis will pick up a uh, a low first rounder to, to kind of allow them to to kind of um, rebuild and you know Memphis should be kind of fun to watch uh, in the next com- you know few years Memphis is floating around at the bottom of the uh, the playoff picture for the West they're sitting in eighth right now yeah I mean and that's okay like I think the oldest person on that team is like 26 or you know that's an exaggeration <laughs> but you know it's a really young team and the NBA, you, you see a lot of these teams are, are really building around their, these young players, and that's smart because you can, if you draft smart and fill in your gaps with free agents, smart free agent pickups, you can you can turn it on uh, and get turned around really quick, unless you're the New York Knicks, where you just uh, sign four power forwards in one offseason, tell your fan base, we're going to be a playoff team, and then when your team sucks, and all we all knew it would, they would suck, uh, you first fire your head coach and then your president of basketball operations who just got fired yesterday. So yeah, it's, it's, you can do that if you're not the Knicks. <laughs> uh, some other basketball news. Everybody's got their eye on Zion Williams and he is averaging 19.6 points a game through his first seven games. Dude, he is fun to watch. If uh, you, Heather, I know you're not a big basketball fan, but one, he plays for the Pelicans. I know so it, it's right up your alley. And two, um, I haven't seen a dude that big move as fast as he does and play basketball. I mean, he's just, he's ridiculously talented and, you know, he's only going to get better with good coaching. And I think 
it, it sucks losing a player like Anthony Davis. But if you've got to lose Anthony Davis, getting a player like Zion to kind of <laughs> replace him, you know, it, it, twist it's okay. my arm. Yeah, you know, I mean, it, it was it was fortuitous because you know they have the, the draft lottery in the NBA, but they they were really smart with their first round picks, um, and if they can just keep. You know, they're going to need a, another point guard. They really are. I mean, I, I'd give up Anthony Davis for a guy who, in his first seven games of his NBA career, can average almost 20 points and eight rebounds per game. Yeah, and I was, I was curious to see how he'd come back and play because, you know, he got injured. Yeah, and he started and slow for, like, the first half of a game. Yeah, and then he just, <laughs> you know, I, it's just get, getting that, getting his legs back under him and, what did he do? He did like 14 points in like three minutes by himself in that yeah. the second half of that game. Yeah, I mean he's he's ridiculously talented, and um, I mean it, it's it's going to be fun to watch. Like the NBA is a fun league. I, I love I love the NBA anyway, but with all these young players coming up, um, you know it, it's going to be fun to kind of watch. Essentially, a lot of teams, like half the teams in the league, growing up. Um, and and challenging those you know those super teams that are forming from all the veterans but i mean who knows man uh there's talks that d'angelo russell could be moved from golden state to minnesota like minnesota's trying to like work a 14 trade to get him you know it's it's kind of crazy what what'll be happening because the trade deadline's tomorrow right well um i know we will have March Madness coming up. I'm sure we're going to do a bracket league like we did for college football pick em and stuff like that. So, Oh, God, I can already tell you I'm going to be dead last champ, so yeah. let's do this. I mean, I did horrible in the pick and That's supposed to be, like, my specialty, so... <laughs> yeah, but see, I, but see, I'm going into this already knowing I'm terrible, so... Uh, you know, there's that. Well... We'll wrap up tonight's show with some local news. The Fayetteville Marksmen have continued to ride a hot streak in the SPHL. Last weekend, they uh, they beat Birmingham 4-3 on the road and then dropped a 3-2 matchup to Huntsville in overtime. So they walked away from the weekend with three points. Um, they remain in the hunt for the top spot in the league sitting just two points behind the Peoria Rivermen who have continued to play really good hockey as well. Um, they do have a six point lead over third place Pensacola. So they're not really looking uh, like they're going to fall too soon. Um, but there are still eight weeks left in the season. So a lot can change for the marksmen, including taking over that top spot uh, this weekend, they host 7th place Birmingham for two games, and Macon comes to town on Sunday, rounding out a three-game weekend. Uh, are you those go games play? this weekend are Disney Night, Military Appreciation Night, and Sunday Fun Day at the Crown Coliseum. Hmm. You going to go to one of them this weekend, Tim? I keep telling myself I'm going to, and then I just don't. It'll probably be probably be later in the season before I get a chance to go. Uh, simply because our rent wasn't we 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 were still rent liable at the apartment plus having bought a house so kind of tightened yeah. things up yeah put uh, the crimp in things yeah so hopefully soon I will be getting to one and correction last week they played Knoxville not uh, Birmingham so uh, you're gonna get no, out to any games soon uh, I'm gonna try and hit at least one more uh, I mean I'm, I'm I'm really busy with school and God, I wish I wasn't, <laughs> um, but I mean, I have, you know, break coming up next month, but I, I'm going to try and get out to a couple, a couple more. I had fun uh, when I went last weekend, week before. And uh, it's just, it's, it's uh, my buddy was telling me that the Zamboni at the crown broke <laughs> um, <laughs> last weekend so the league officials came out and said, you can't skate on the whole ice. So they just did a shootout to see who won. <laughs> oh, wow. That's the most Fayetteville thing I've heard in a long time. Yeah. I mean, only in Fayetteville is the Zamboni going to break. But speaking of local sports, I really do want to check out that military uh, tournament that we're hosting here at Segra Stadium, the baseball tournament. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to, I'm going to get down to that. I'm trying to work through my school to get a couple of my sports reporters out there to cover, uh, the entire event, but like two on one day, two on the second, two on the third, um, just so everybody can kind of get that experience. So, um, if anybody from Segra listens to the podcast, look your boy up. Uh, cause I'll be calling. Uh, but no, I mean, it, it'll, I think that'll be really cool. I mean, you, you want to get as much use out of that stadium as you can mm-hmm. for, for, <laughs> for breaking the budget as bad as it did. Mm-hmm. Make some money back on it. Use it for all the things. <laughs> I mean, and the, the woodpeckers announced that we're going to have a huge guest at one game this year. Um, the actor who played Kevin Malone on The Office is going to be throwing out the first pitch at a uh, office-themed night in May for the Woodpeckers. Is he? Um, is he Bumgardner, right? Is, That's his uh, name? Yeah, Brian Bumgardner, I think is yeah. his name. Is he from Fayetteville, or is he just like, fuck it, I'll go, I I'll go take a game? I think they just off. work some connections. I don't think he's got any ties to here. He's, he's probably got a mortgage payment, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's cool. Like, do it because, like, you know, the the weirdest people that you wouldn't think go to minor league baseball games show up. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, just check it. I mean, what what's the worst? I mean, it, uh, you got to think there was probably some intern there, like, hey man, you need to call up his agent right now and see if he'd be willing to come down here. And he's just like that intern's like, damn it, you know. <laughs> Listen, if he doesn't trip uh, off the pitcher's mound holding a big pot of chili i'm gonna be very upset <laughs> oh that's still one of my favorite scenes that's i will be very upset well yeah one of the things that they're doing is apparently you get to they're gonna have a big pot of kevin's chili at the game that you can get um yeah but you have to wear half of it that's the whole thing yeah uh, you, you don't want to embarrass the guy out on a baseball field you know i mean he's Yes, I'm sure. I'm sure he's a very serious comedian. Sure, okay. <laughs> Listen, he he is a professional actor, and, Fine. and one of the most well respected and and most beloved shows probably in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And I'm and I'm old as fuck, so um, not old enough to bitch about a halftime show on the internet, though. Not quite. Right, I like, can't. like there's still there's still a line, <laughs> but I mean. I don't know. I think that'd be cool, Heather. Like, you just, like, fall face first off the just mound or something. face first, yeah. yeah. You know, but, I mean, this is good. This is good. You know, get people excited, keep asses in seats, and, and get that fan base built. You know, it was a great first season. Hopefully, we can keep it going into the second season. Um, I know I enjoy games there. It's a beautiful stadium. Uh, we get to watch a pretty good team. I will I will not bitch about that. Um it's certainly better than watching a game in Burlington. So, cause they play at a high school stadium. <laughs> Speaking uh, of, you know, other baseball, um, I discovered we have another collegiate team coming to Fayetteville. Yeah. It's, it's, um, the, Coy- the Carolina coyotes are going to be kind of, I, I don't want to say replacing the swamp dogs because, I don't think it's on the same level. Well, it's uh, not. Just yet. It's a new league. Yeah, it's brand new. It's two years old. And let's face it, there's some scouts that are like, "Who the fuck are these knuckleheads?" And and you're probably gonna, you're not gonna, you're you're probably not gonna see a lot of players from out of the state of North Carolina. No, especially because all four teams are North Carolina teams. Yeah, um, I mean that'll be cool. I mean I'll go check it out. Like I still have to check the schedule for all our other, um, you know, uh, Fayetteville reps. Uh, as far as our athletic teams go. So I would like to to support all our athletes in the area. Uh, they're working their asses off to to put out for us, for our entertainment value. The least I could do is go and support them by sitting in a seat after I pay for my ticket, drinking beer, and then booing them. And then coming on the show and talking about it. Absolutely. Mm. Uh, <laughs> And if any of the uh, the Carolina Coyotes are listening and want to, you know, host some pseudo press, yeah, I mean, uh, we have we have like twenty eight dedicated listeners. You so. are a respectable <laughs> journalist. Uh, yeah, Heather and I just like to get on a microphone and bitch. Well, I mean, I have to be because this 
I could be end up, you know, I could end up doing this for a, a career. I mean, not that I'm going to put this on my resume because people are like, oh, yo, he was a co-host on a podcast. Let's listen to it. Potential, potential employer is like, no. <laughs> 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 Did you hear the shit that came out of his mouth? <laughs> yeah. Well, that'll wrap it up for this week's episode. Be sure to follow us on all social media at Hometown Crowd. You can get in the conversation at our new Hometown Crowd podcast group, facebook.com slash groups slash Hometown Crowd pod. As always, subscribe on your favorite podcast source. And if you're on iTunes, leave us a review and we will read it on the show, uh, as we proved earlier. For Mac and Heather, I'm Tim. Thanks for cheering with the Hometown Crowd. Bye, everyone. And just remember, if you're going number two in public, if you want to discreetly cover up the poop sounds, just start shrieking at the top of your lungs. (laughs) (laughs) Great advice as always, Heather. Okay, love you. Bye. All right.